Green Seal City. Is everybody ready to go? Let's proclaim the greatest radio show. Welcome, fans, to another episode of The Spread. I'm your host, Jim Sella, here with Jay Dash. Dash, I'm actually in studio today. I'm feeling it. Aren't you excited? Yeah, you got some smoke in your face, and by the end of this, you're going to be unable to breathe. I haven't been able to breathe since I got here Friday night at 10 o'clock. Well, then, keep smoking in here. Believe. We're going to wrap up our Steeler Camp Battles episodes here. We're going to talk about the defensive line. The starting D-line, Dash, basically already set. You got Cam Hayward, you got Stefan Tuitt, you have Javon Hargrave. Three guys. Hayward's not quite as young, but Tuitt and Hargrave are still really young. Yeah, but Hayward may be the best on this defense, right? I like Sean Davis myself, though. I still say Sean Davis. Hayward's coming off that, I think it was a torn pectoral muscle last year, so he's eager to get back into the swing of things and start sacking the quarterback. Tuitt has said he's setting a personal goal of dub- double-digit sacks for himself for this year. So that would be, be nice, nice to get. coming off the line, yeah. Yeah, D lineman there with 10-plus sacks, especially since the linebackers, I don't want to say we're unsure of them, but they're, you're probably not going to have one linebacker with you know 15 sacks. You might get 20, oh, cool. 25 as a group out of all of them. So we're going to need pressure from all around, so it would be nice to see Tuitt get on there. Hargrave, you think he's going to take a step up. Hopefully he's going to take a step up. He had a good year last year as a third-round pick rookie. Uh, surprising a lot of people, actually. People thought Dan McCullers was going to be able to step into that yeah, role. even if he doesn't take uh, the next step, I think he, had, he was good enough last season if he just remains at, at that pace right there. The questions really are who's going to play behind these guys, who's going to spell these guys, because a lot of last year you had Hayward, it and Hargrave out there all the time, and they when got healthy. tired. Yeah, and and you need at least somebody to come in and, and give them a spell, maybe if it's only two, three plays here and there, but these are big 300-pound guys. They need to breathe. They need to get off the field a little bit. They need to stay fresh. So you're going to have to have a couple guys behind them that can actually play. The Steelers still have Dan McCullers, that big, huge guy. He's like six, seven, maybe big a little. Dan McCullers, yeah, over three hundred pounds. He's lost weight every year that he's been here. Every year I read, oh, he lost ten, fifteen pounds coming into camp. He's going to be more agile and get to the pat or get to the quarterback. And I, I don't know if it's going to happen. I mean, this guy's had a shot. I'm not saying it's never going to happen. He's probably never going to be more than a rotational guy. But yeah, but they were relying on him more than you wanted in the past, and now you really don't have to do that. As a backup, it's not nearly as bad. Agreed. That's what I was just going to say. As a, as a backup, as a rotational player, that's really where he fits in. As a starter, they were trying to kind of fit a, a, a round peg in a square hole. really wasn't working out. He's just not that guy. He's, he's got the size, and everybody wants to know, you know, why can't he do it? He just doesn't seem to have that drive. There's just some guys who don't have that switch where they go a thousand percent at all times and McCullers I don't want to call him soft because he's huge and he could crush me but for how big he is he doesn't well, for what play the Steelers physical. want out of their nose tackles tough in the first place right the other guy you got is Latarius Walton LT Walton however you want to say it uh, this is a guy the Steelers are big on as far as potential moving into the future they think he's got Uh, The ability to get to the quarterback, he can set the edge as far as the run game goes with the linebackers. He's big and strong. He's kind of that prototypical 3-4 D lineman where he's going to stay in place, eat up blockers, allow the linebackers to get to the quarterback. Uh, I don't think he's going to make a huge impact. Obviously, you got these three starters locked in, but I think out of the backups, you'll you'll see him coming in first, at least in the preseason. What do you think... The chances are all three linemen are starters stay healthy all season. That's the thing. You're going to see Walton or Alu Alu, who we're going to talk about here in a minute, and Alu-Alu. McCullers play at least some. And then these guys are going to play on special teams too. So just because they're not in there starting doesn't mean they're not going to be getting snaps every week. They're going to be on your punt teams. They're going to be on your field goal teams. They're going to be on your short yardage defenses. Uh, and the Steelers... That was one thing they kind of struggled with the last few years is a short yardage defense. You know, when they really need to stop them for that one or two yards, teams have been able to get up the middle and get that on them in in years past. Last year they got better at it with Hargrave in the middle, uh, but then Hayward went down. And And you lose Timmons, so who knows? Yeah, so we're going to need to to shore that up. I think Walton's definitely going to be that guy who gets the first chance coming through camp, coming into the preseason. 
the, he's young. It's somebody that this regime has drafted. They like him, and I think that he has at least a shot at being the first guy off the bench in this defense. We'll see if he can pick it up. Do you know how young he is? He's 25. So what, he just drafted just a couple years ago. Believe it. Two years in the league. Get it. And then there's who else? Alualu. Tyson Alualu. Now, he's kind of a wild card. He was a first-round pick. I believe he was honestly a top 15, maybe even a top 10 pick for the Jacksonville Jaguars. Well, listen, if he was for the Jacksonville Jaguars, there was a good chance he was because how many years were they in the bottom 15? Oh, yeah, the Jaguars have been horrible ever since Mark Brunel left. They took care of the Steelers when they were in the same division, I tell you that. Yeah, they always beat our ass. Yeah. Even their first year, that was BS. And I think Jacksonville actually had a little bit better of a defense than people think last season in terms of numbers. For sure. Their offense, they were a come-from-behind come offense. The defense struggled a little bit, but they came on late. And I, I don't know, they're probably going to be a better defense than they were last year. But they let Alu Alu walk. The Steelers brought him in. I don't want to call him a project player because he, I guess, you know, he's kind of got some skill to be a first round pick, but he's not going to be somebody who comes in and plays all the time. He's 6'2", 294. He was a little bit more of a pass rusher going into that Jaguars defense. They wanted him to come off the edge in a 4-3, so I'm not sure how exactly he fits into the Steelers scheme of a 3-4, but they keep saying they're going to run this weird hybrid, do all these different things, run man coverage. Uh, they were in their nickel predominantly all year last year, so they're going to need some D linemen. They run a, a like a two five four. I mean, they they run these crazy situations: one D lineman, three D lineman. You never know what's going to go on. So you might see Alo Alo get some time out there, but I'm not going to expect a lot out of the guy. But it would be nice if he could just come in, provide some depth, provide a little bit of spell for these guys here and there. And then really just come in on these short yardage plays or maybe even situationally on uh, obvious passing downs and help get some pressure on the quarterback. It's it's not like this is a young guy with the best ahead of him, though. He is 30 years old, so he's already past his prime. So I, I really don't expect much from him. No, but you just hope he can use that veteran savvy, you know, to, to make the plays that he's supposed to make, make a couple key stops but nothing too flashy, no game-breaking plays. He's not going to be the reason why you win a game, most likely. But you just hope that he can come in there and not be the reason you lose a game at the same time. Provide some good tackling. I mean, that's all you really need to do as a rotational D-lineman for the Steelers. You need to eat up blocks, tackle on the guys in your area, and for God's sake, stay in your zone. And I know they're not going to keep playing zone defense as far as pass coverage, but the linebackers and the D-line, you still have to stay in your area. If you're not supposed to be rushing the passer on that play, don't rush the passer. Because if you do, you're going to be out of position. If you miss, there's going to be somebody twied open, and then you're going to get burnt. The Steelers' defense is all about knowing where you're supposed to be, being responsible for that position, and staying there. So that's what Alu Alu needs to do if he really wants to make this roster. Because I don't think they're keeping all three. I think you're only going to see two of the three between him, McCullers, and Walton. So I don't really know what to expect. I guess it kind of depends on how much they feel they want to spell to it Hayward and Hargrave. You know, Har or Hayward's getting a little bit up there in age. I think he's around 28 now, maybe 29. And how healthy they are going into the season. But I right. think this group really has to step up this season because there's a lot more questions around the linebacking core than in the past as well with Timmons leaving, obviously, and they want to get Watt involved. So who, who knows what's going to happen with the linebackers this season. So I want to see uh, a big season out of both the ends for sure. And if Hargrave can build off of what he did last season, like you were saying earlier, but even if not, if he can just continue to do what he was doing last season, I mean, what they did in the draft last season, if it, if if they can get the same type of production out of this year's draft, there's a, a lot of good things to come with this team. Please believe. And if it really, I mean, I don't know if I expect Tuit to get double-digit sacks, but say him and Hayward both get 7 to 10, which Hayward's yeah, averaged 7.5, uh, I think, in his last couple of years when he's playing the full year. And then, you know, Watt and Harrison could combine for 10 on that side. Dupree could get somewhere around 8 to 10. And then you don't really know what you're going to get out of the middle linebackers. We don't blitz with them a whole lot. But still, if the Steelers can stay in the top, even top 10 in sacks, and then get a couple turnovers, build that up a little bit. That's what they they were missing last year. 
they were getting torched and they weren't taking advantage of big plays like they did two seasons ago when their team was leading the league almost in turnovers and sacks. So that's really what they need to get back to. It starts with the D-line. You control the line of scrimmage. You win football games. It all starts there. O-line, D-line. If you can dominate on both sides of the football, you're going to win more often than not. The starting D-linemen, all three are studs in my opinion. It's all about these backups. Can they come in rotationally? Can they help spell these guys? And if one of these starters go down, can these backups come in, start, and, and at least provide something? You know, they're not going to be as good as to it, to it and Hayward and Hargrave, but they got to be able to do something because it's Super Bowl or bust the next two, maybe three years, depending on how long Big Ben's here. And that's what it's all about. Well, he's talking again about hanging them up, man. Well, he's saying he's going to take it year to year, which I'm fine with. He's laid it all out on the field his whole entire career, so he's worried about his long-term health. That's that's cool with me. As long as he doesn't Brett Favre it and make us wait till like two weeks before training camp, then retire, unretire. Give it a few weeks after the season, let the Steelers know. I'm cool with that. And then stick with the decision. If he retires and he came back, you'd be happy as hell, dude. If he came back for Pittsburgh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, But if he exactly. came back for somebody else, so I'd So if he pulled a it. Brett Favre, you wouldn't care as long as it's he's staying in Pittsburgh. Yeah, I just, I I guess if he did it once, but if he kept doing it, then it would start to like. You'd never like, turn on him. I would never turn on him, and I'd never turn him down, but like my heart can't handle it. I just need to know. I need to know. Tom Petty said it best. And what is, is he now, 35, 36? Yeah, he's getting up there. Poor guy. He's been sacked a lot, too. Hopefully they can keep him upright this year. I mean, the past few seasons, though, it's been a, a lot, lot better, man. So if, if they can continue this, maybe he will keep playing as long as he's not getting uh, hit around, you know? Pummeled into the ground. Let's hope this defense can step up. I know they played well down the stretch last year. Let's hope they can do it all season long. I think the key to beating New England in the playoffs is getting them at home. Obviously, every team has a better chance when they play at home. The Steelers have a much better chance. I think Tom Brady's 40 years old now, correct? Uh, Yeah, I believe so. And I I heard something about there's only one quarterback that made the playoffs at 40 years old or something, and they lost in the playoffs. It was Brett Favre, I believe. Probably. Brett Favre's done everything. Maybe Tom Brady's Boom, done. You've been you every year for like the last three years. Like, nah, last I year I did not. Last year I, I was. I, drop I mean, off. I wasn't excited about Tom Brady, but uh, I, you know, I drafted him in fantasy. I didn't think he was gonna drop off last season necessarily. I did say it two years ago and the year before that as well, though. He has to at some point, right? You're right. That's it. If you say it every year, eventually you'll be right. Yeah. <laughs> well, I skipped last year. I'll, I'll bring it back this year. Tom Brady's not even gonna last the season. Jimmy Garoppolo is going to come in and win the Super Bowl. Piece of crap. Fans, any questions or comments on any of these episodes, go back, look for our safeties, corners, wide receivers, tight ends, running backs. We didn't do the quarterbacks because it's Roethlisberger and Landry Jones and Josh Josh Dobbs. I mean, if you need anybody to talk about that, you're a jabroni. Follow us on Twitter, bet underscore the spread. Follow me on Twitter at BetJimTheWin. Check out our Facebook page at Facebook.com slash BetTheSpread. Come back to YouTube, click subscribe. We're up over 400 million subscribers. <laughs> Love it. Yeah,